listen, if you haven't already figured it out by now, I'm a hopeless footballing romantic. I mean, I have a Subudio Stadium here, for goodness sake. So this setting in Cumbria, this quaint, cozy ground, home of Barrow Football Club, what a setting for a classic David versus Goliath battle between League Two Barrow and the Premier League's Aston Villa. And it's so quaint and cozy. In fact, three balls left the ground entirely and went into the Irish Sea, one smashed off of a light standard. That's how cozy it was. But Aston Villa got the job done. And in honor of the incredible young talent that Aston Villa is harvesting, I'm pulling out a very special Canadian rye. This is called Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye. It's a former Whiskey Bible Award winner worldwide. So it is quality. It is young. It is a winner. And it gets the job done. So let's review. Let's recap. Barrow nil. Aston Villa 6. There's always a bit of a risk when you throw together a second squad, if you will. It's like rummaging through your fridge and try to make dinner with what's left in the back. It sometimes can be great. Sometimes it's crap. On this occasion, though, it was pretty good. And you have to give your squad members minutes. You have to keep them razor sharp. They must have something to fight for in training. Otherwise, when injuries and suspensions crop up, they're not ready. And in this particular case, they got those players the minutes they needed. They sprinkled in the magic youth. There was this transference of experience occurring, which I love. And in the end, they made it look very, very comfortable in what could have been a very difficult game. And I was surprised with Barrow because we heard they were a pressing team. They didn't press as much as I thought. They played five of the back. So I thought they were going to try a low block, which we all know Villa has trouble with at times. But instead, they sometimes played with a, a rather high line. It was with the high line that Villa punished them. Here we go then with the Holy Trinity Special Carabao Cup Second Round Edition of Barrow Nil, Aston Villa 6. And first honorable mention goes to Connor Howrahan, who played two excellent balls that came at very important times of the game. The first one, a nice little lob over the top for El Ghazi, who set up Archer for the 1-0 goal, settled everybody down a little bit. The second one, though, was beautiful, driven in toward the corner flag for Freddy Gilbert, and what a ball he plays across. At that point, the game is done and dusted. And very much like El Ghazi, when Connor Howrahan is given time and space, he can look like Pirlo. Uh, and I wonder if Aston Villa is trying to accommodate him with a move away, because if that's the case, he certainly did not hurt himself for the most part today. Honorable mention number two, Jed Steer. These games must be awful for goalkeepers because you do virtually nothing for 90 minutes and then you're suddenly called into action. First half, he has to come a long way to try to catch in a crowd. He drops it, fell on it. No problems there. And in the second half, Connor Howerhand's caught in possession early and he has to make a great save diving to his left to preserve the clean sheet at 3-0 didn't put a foot wrong and he hasn't put a foot wrong for this club has he but he's always been second or third fiddle to Aston Villa despite the fact that he was heroic in the promotion run up and we know Aston Villa has to solve some kind of a goalkeeping problem here because Neil Cutler can't be the only one pushing Emmy Martinez is Jed Steer that guy or do they have to go and try to figure out how to economically find somebody who can provide the quality in that position and that's going to require some creativity but I would love for the number two to be Jed Steer because he seems like a great guy and he's been a loyal servant to this club. Big issue number three, El Golzi. Man, what a game. That first goal, what a ball across. Precision driven ball that Cameron Archer just had to get on the end of and square up his foot to bash it home. No chance. Beautiful. And El Ghazi was in a position in the inside left channel that he could have shot and gone for goal himself, but he lays it on a plate. Unselfish, fantastic goal. The penalty irritated me. There's a time and a place for a Panenka, and in my opinion, that was not it. And the reason I say that is because if you blow that 
in a one nil game, you look like a buffoon and you've really given them reason to get their tails up and their tails were up anyway. Barrow's best spell of the game came immediately after that. And they should have had a penalty moments later. It looked stone cold to me. And I think a VAR was in this game. They would have been awarded that penalty. And then imagine it's two to one. The crowd is already whipped up and annoyed because they've been shown up. The players are whipped up and they're playing more physical. And to me, all of that was completely avoidable. Now call me anal, call me old fashioned, but I want my football club to be first class in everything it does. And Aston Villa looks like it's evolving in that direction. And sometimes that means winning with humility. Yes, punish teams. Yes, be ruthless. Put them away in circumstances like this game. But you can do it with class and you can do it with humility. And I think Anwar Al Ghazi should have done what he does for every single penalty, slot it away and then turn to midfield because at 2 0, it's done and dusted. And you're looking at me like I'm crazy because everybody loves a Panenka and oh man, that was filthy. Not me. And Anwar Al Ghazi set up a beautiful fourth goal in the 62nd minute. He was excellent today because when Anwar Al Ghazi is given time and space, he can look like Ronaldo. And that's what he's going to get against the League Two side. The challenge is he does not get that time and space versus Premier League teams. And that's still an issue I think Aston Villa has to upgrade and address. As the Who famously sang, the kids are all right. In fact, you could argue. They're more than all right. The thing you notice about these players when you watch a game like that, the composure, the poise, the assuredness, but also the supreme technical ability. I mean, these guys have pillowy soft touches. It's as if the ball just sticks to them and stays there. And fair play to the academy technical staff led by Mark Harrison and company for not just identifying these players in the first place, but working with them developing them, nurturing them, and then maybe most importantly, promoting them at the right time. It looks to me as if they've put all the right players into that first team environment at the right time. And now they're being challenged and they're rising to that challenge. Some of these guys have explosive pace. Others are relentless, like Jacob Ramsey falls into that category. But Jaden Philogene Bedes has gears and you can see them when he changes them and he runs past defenders. I mean, he drew the penalty that way. This guy played an unbelievable ball to Cameron Archer for the hat trick too because he had to delay, he had to wait for the little opening and then he played it right between a whole bunch of legs and put it on a platter. The synergy is already there amongst these academy players. The Chuck Wameka brothers are so unique from one another. Carney is elegant and he glides the way he runs. And then Caleb is this man mountain unit of a beast. Yet both of them have these beautiful soft feet and they can read the game so well. And then you have young Hayden Lindley, who looks like he's 12, by the way. Smooth as butter. Great weight of pass. Composed. What do you think was going through the minds of the academy players at Bodymore Heath, the U16s, the U18s, the U23s? What were they texting each other as that game was unfolding? Can you imagine what they must have been thinking? How validating it was to see their colleagues succeed at this level? That's going to give them extra motivation going into training tomorrow and all for the rest of the week and maybe the season for that matter. Because when you watch one of your colleagues open their professional debut with a hat trick, that has to be a great motivation. Which brings us nicely to number one. Archer hits three bullseyes. Archer, bullseyes. Did you get it? Because his name is Archer. And he, well, we didn't see Wesley's name on the 20. I think a lot of people thought, well, what the heck's happening here? Is he injured again? And now we know he's probably on his way back to Belgium. But what an opportunity then for the 19-year-old from Walsall who has been with Aston Villa since he was six years old. And why we should all be so excited, apart from the fact that he's a local lad and has come through the academy. The fact that he scored three 
totally unique goals with different parts of his feet. I mean, the first one was all about the timing of the run, getting on the blind shoulder of the center back and then arriving, staying on side, but being there as the ball arrived, which he did perfectly, just had to open up his foot and guide it in basically. Great ball again. But the second one, the second one was sublime. The through ball from El Ghazi was great. Carney Chuck will make it with a great reverse pass just before that, by the way. And Archer clocks that the goalkeeper hesitates so he knows he's going to go over him at full speed. He scoops it just at the right time. What a touch. And it floats there around the height of the crossbar. So even if a defender had beelined it back and gotten underneath it, he wouldn't have gotten there. The ball hung up and then just dropped into the goal. It was an absolute thing of beauty. But the third, the third one, which put him in the same company as Juan Pablo Angel and Scott Sinclair as Aston Villa players who scored hat tricks in a League Cup. This one was all about timing and movement. And Philogene Bidet's great ball as he stepped into the little pocket and boom, planted it. Laces, bottom corner, crowded penalty area. Three totally diverse goals, which tells you this cat is a poacher. And the perfect complement to the Aston Villa strike force if in fact Wesley is moving on. Even though Danny Ings is also a penalty area poacher, a very professional and experienced one. But imagine that mentor ship. Ings teaching Archer a thing or two, maybe about being a bit more of a link player, which Danny Ings enjoys being. But then there's also this budding academy chemistry that is happening. And just when you thought you could not love Cameron Archer anymore, he's interviewed by Villa TV after the game, asking him about his goals. To be fair, I can't even remember the goals happened so quick. Um, uh, I can't remember, sorry. I'm going to have to watch it, but... Oh my God, how could you not love this kid? And by the way, to get more great Villa TV content, make sure to become a digital member. Now, despite all the positives and excitement, we do need to temper our expectations a little bit and put this in context. I mean, with all due respect, this is still a League Two side that was in the National League last year. But so much was accomplished in these 90 minutes. Some of the senior squad players got a full game under their belts. And although Axel Twanzebe looked a little rusty to me, he's going to sharpen up because of this. Matt Target looked like he was getting a little bit stronger. So those were critical minutes for those players. For the kids, senior debuts, confidence, goals. They're going to be hungry. They're going to want more. That can only help improve the squad. They filled the net with goals. They kept a clean sheet. And maybe most importantly, they gave themselves another chance for another game like this in the third week of September in round three, which will very likely be against a much more difficult opponent, you have to think. So lots of positives. And I'm sure it was a very happy coach ride home for the players. And for the supporters, God bless them. I mean, that's a 10-hour odyssey on a Tuesday night for most of them, but I'm sure it was a very happy and positive car ride home. Well, the third round draw is imminent. And remember, the winner of the Carabao Cup competition this year gets automatic entry into the Europa Conference League and maybe a date with Johan Lange's former employers at FC Copenhagen or that Norwegian powerhouse Bodo Glint or some exotic Romanian or Azerbaijani club. Thankfully, it's a return to Premier League action this weekend with a visit from Dean Smith's former employers at Brentford, who always seem to have Villa's number at Villa Park. And hopefully Aston Villa have some reinforcements back. Until then, enjoy the 6-0 win at Barrow and up the mighty Villa.